So obviously knowing the, uh, <clears throat> the weather prior to burning is really important, right? We talked about, you know, temperature, humidity, wind speed, direction, uh, cloud cover. Those are the things that we kind of need to know and figure out. So we need to understand how we, once we get our prescription written, we need to figure out where to find that resource to make sure we're within that prescription. So <clears throat> the site that I use most often is the National Weather Service. Now the National Weather Service is a federal government uh, service provided to us uh, through our tax dollars that basically covers every square inch of this country. So there's different forecasts uh, throughout Nebraska, but also throughout the country that form these different districts. So, you know, on the eastern part of the state, we got Omaha, there's Hastings, North Platte, Cheyenne, Goodland, Sioux Falls, they all kind of cover this area. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you go to the National Weather Service site. So you can do a couple things. It's uh, um, weather.gov. You can just go to that. And then you want to enter on the left-hand side down here, right here. You can either enter your zip code by city or state, and it'll take you directly to kind of where you where you are, or the other option is just to click on, you know, general location of where you are throughout the country. And then, so if you type in your, your town or whatever, uh, what will pull up would be this general forecast uh, area. So if you look at this marker, so down here in this map is, would be kind of a five mile marker map of your area. And so if let's say you just click on the nearest town, you can actually drag this map directly on your farm and drop it right on your farm and double click it and it'll bring up the forecast for that area. So again, move it to your general area where you need it to be, click on it. And then once you get to this page, uh, this page will actually give you kind of a general outlook and outline of what the weather is supposed to be over the next few days. So down the bottom here, I'll show you, you know, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, let's say cloudy, stuff like that. But that really doesn't tell us information that we actually can utilize. That just tells us, it gives you like the general high temperature and whether it's gonna be sunny or not. So it doesn't tell us the wind direction it doesn't tell us what our humidity is gonna do throughout the day. So we actually need to go in and click what we call the hourly weather forecast. So on that page that you click on, uh, it's on the right-hand side, it says hourly weather forecast. And then you'll just click on that. So once you get to this page, if you're planning on just doing your farm, you can bookmark this page um, and it brings up what we call the hourly weather graph. So once you reach this hourly weather graph, there are some things on this hourly weather graph that we really don't need. And there's some things on here that, that are not checked that need to be checked. So if you're in there checking boxes, you can get rid of dew point, wind chill, um, precipitation potential, rain, all the precipitation. But then we also wanna add for under fire weather, we wanna add mixing height, we wanna know that. Haynes index, remember we talked about what the Haynes index was. Um, and then some of these others are optional like transportation wind speed. That's good for, you know, big, big time smoke management. That's like um, where the smoke goes when it gets up into the atmosphere. So you basically click on or click off all that and then click these that you need and then you'll hit submit. And then this is basically what it'll end up with is a graph of all the, all the things that you do need. So you can see at this top graph, um, there's temperature, there's dew point and wind chill on this one, but it'll show your temperature line. So let's say on you know Tuesday at 10 a.m. it's going to be 46 degrees, and you can see from an hourly position that the weather or the temperature is going to increase. At the same time, you can look down at your winds and say, okay, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to have northwest winds. 46 degrees, and then humidity is down here under the green line, 55% humidity. 
And you can basically follow these trends on this hourly weather graph um, for, all, for all your needs. Now, the one thing to consider is when you're planning your burn, we start typically looking at least five to seven days out just to kind of give a broad general idea of decent burn days. And then we keep checking the forecast every day to, because as, as you get closer and closer to the day, the forecast constantly changes. And the closer you get to your burn, you know, the morning of, the night before, the more accurate representation you're gonna get of that forecast. And we typically don't plan, uh, we don't plan a, a go situation on our prescribed burn until we recheck the weather the morning of. So again, here's a bigger diagram showing that temperature surface winds, relative humidity. Again, go with that temperature, temperature relative humidity connection, highest temperature of the day this is January 7th, 42 degrees, 50% humidity, Northwest winds. So with the wind directions, think about it as uh, if you were gonna plant a flag in the ground, where you plant that flag into the ground at that angle is where the wind is going to be coming from. So if you go all the way back to here, you'll see that it starts off with the south wind direction, goes to the southwest, and then goes straight west, and then turns to the northwest, 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 straight west, straight west, straight west, northwest, northwest, northeast, northeast, east, and then all the way to southeast. And then when you get those little marks above it, those are gonna be wind gusts. So those are gonna be gusts that, uh, that you know, that you're gonna have throughout the burn to deal with. Humidity is pretty straightforward, easy to read. Sky cover, remember we talked about how that affects our fire behavior. Um, and it'll actually give you a kind of a general idea of what the, what the sky cover or cloud cover is gonna be doing through the day. So the other thing that we tend to look at, we'll talk about mixing height and smoke management here pretty soon, but this is under the fire weather portion. So basically mixing height is the height in which, you know, the smoke really starts mixing with the atmosphere really well. And you want it at at least 1500 foot. And so, you know, here, this is at seven, this is times hundred foot. So you're looking at 700 feet of lift mixing height at 10 a.m. So if you ever been to like, a, you know, been to a factory or plant at early in the morning and you see the smoke coming out of their stack or the steam coming out of their stack, and that basically it goes up a little bit and then you start seeing it just hover right, you know, uh, really low in the atmosphere. Basically that inversion layer is trapping it. But then as you see, as it warms up throughout the day, by one o'clock, we're at 2,400 foot. So, you know, if you were gonna burn this day, you probably wouldn't wanna start burning until at least noon. And then you wanna be done by 4 p.m. because that's when that, that inversion layer would come back down to the ground. Here's the Haynes index when we talked about the stability of the atmosphere, six being really high instability and one being really stable. So you can see this trend line here, five, and then it drops down to four and down to three. Um, here, it'll give you a general idea. And this is kind of all over the place depending on a lot of atmosphere conditions that we need to hear. I'll just probably explain um, why that occurs, but uh, it's generally spot on about the stability of the atmosphere. And transportation winds, another good indicator. Um, you know, if you're doing a really big burn or you're burning near town, um, you know, this would be good for like, you know, if you're in the Flint Hills or something. Some, most of the time, the, the transportation wind is gonna be the same or really close direction as the surface wind. Sometimes it, it can be different but uh, it'll give you a good indication of how fast that transport wind up in the atmosphere is, is pushing that smoke. Now, if you, don't like, if you don't like using this graph, all you gotta do is click on it and it turns into this tabular forecast. Um, to me, this might as well be written in a foreign language. I, it, to me, I can't read it. So I prefer the hourly weather graph, but it has the same exact information on there. It's got its military time um, and they've got, you know, temperature, wind, wind direction, gusts, sky cover, all the same information as the other. Here's a better picture of it. 
some people like this format better. Some people like the hourly weather forecast a lot better. Also on the uh, page, there's fire zone forecast. Uh, it could be a little hard to find some of this, but it, basically the same information is going to show up uh, in the fire zone forecast. You can just, when you get to the, the page, it'll take you right to it. Um, just type in the fire zone forecast. It's got the same information in there as everything else, but they instead of doing it hourly, they just give you the kind of the highs and lows for the day. Um, so it's a little more broader information than the hourly weather forecast, which is why we use the hourly weather forecast in our general planning tool. Now, the other big, big one we use is called the Meso West surface weather. Now, I think most egg states have these. These are like live live looks at weather across the state. And so you can overlay current weather, weather conditions like temperature, RH, wind direction, wind speed, stuff like that. And we use this uh, in general to just like, if you, if you wanna get a live look of what's going on across the state as you're burning, you know, to see if there's any wind changes that are happening, um, those are always good to do. And we'll go take a look at the websites real quick uh, and just show you. <clears throat> so, here it is. so again, this is the National Weather Service uh, forecast area. What I typically do is I got my my place, uh, places that we burn all bookmarked, but, you know, let's say you're going to be burning in eastern Nebraska, it actually shows the forecast area. And then you can kind of zoom in on, you know, whatever, you know, area you're in. And then it just gives you a general idea of what's coming up in the next five to seven days, you know, whether it's gonna be sunny, sunny, breezy, partly cloudy, stuff like that. Then they give you a little more detailed forecast down here where it says, you know, um, this afternoon wind gusts to be 21, but still doesn't give you that, that kind of information. So here's where you kind of can move. So let's say, you know, we got pretty close, but our farm's actually right here. Get down, click on it, and it'll take us right into it. And then we'd go right here to the hourly weather forecast. Click on all the stuff that we don't want. Stuff that we do want. And you can see that today is actually a pretty decent burn day. 60 degrees, 40% humidity, 15 to 20 mile an hour gusts. That's not that bad. You know, we can manage those conditions, especially with that, that weather. Um, Haynes index is really high this afternoon. So it means it's really dry in the lower atmosphere. Pretty decent mixing night throughout the afternoon. Good transportation winds that, like I said, pretty close to, close to that. And then here's the mesonet. Again, uh, click on the real time maps, and it'll give you basically the information that you need, wind direction, and speed. So the one thing to consider when you're doing your plan, your burn, is that sometimes it's very sometimes it's, it happens where maybe where you're burning specifically in your neck of the woods, you maybe have a south wind. But maybe you go, you know, 30 miles or 40 miles to the east and that wind's in the southeast. So that means like maybe some fronts in. So one of the things that I'll do is not only can you use, you know, this mesonet as an indicator, but you can actually go back to this page and go back to the Omaha, Omaha office. And let's say you're gonna, let's say you're burning here east of Columbus and what I'll generally do is maybe I'll go click west of Columbus um, by Norfolk or Burwell, see what the weather is going to do there, maybe go down south into the east and north, and just kind of check the surrounding areas to make sure that the forecast is kind of lining up. And then you can actually look at, you know, with the mesonet, you can actually confirm. Um, so you can see like 
here up in Skyler, they got a southeast wind at 13. Well, down close to Central City, uh, they're going to be having a southwest wind. So, you know, that would make a big difference of, you know, where you're planning because, you know, that cutoff line could be, you know, somewhere in here or something for, you know, southwest wind. So you could be right on the edge. So it's good to kind of move around and check those things. Uh, there's other options available to kind of check the forecasted winds across the state. Uh, we won't go into those there, but um, it's pretty pretty easy, accurate information. Like I said, the big thing is is that you know you always start planning five days ahead of what day might work, and the winds or the the conditions are always going to change, and they change right up until you start you know a couple hours before you're burning, and so it's always good to kind of check them a couple times a day. You know, if you're planning to burn, you know, you're checking the weather three or four times a day just to make sure things are, are holding out. So, then on the forecast page here, like on the main um, area forecast, if you go to forecast, there's the fire weather. And then you can just click on the county that you're burning in. And it has that information in there. 